Welcome to an installment of Living Fully, the podcast. I'm super excited today to be speaking to a person that's so near and dear to my heart, my friend Tembi Magwaza, who happens to be a Mrs. South Africa finalist. Tembi, welcome to my podcast. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Zala. I'm excited to be here. I just want to say, Wuti, congratulations, girl. Yeah, I'm loving this for you already. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much, friend. And thank you for having me. I'm really honored. I'm the honored one. And when I thought about the topic we're going to chat about today, I, I thought you were just the perfect person. And just to let our audience in on what we're discussing today, so today's topic is how can you feel confident enough to pursue your calling? I know we, we talk a lot about calling, Zala, we've, we've, we've chatted about uh, finding our purpose. And I thought maybe through your lived experience today, you could share some nuggets of, of how you're navigating your way towards your calling and your purpose. I've got some icebreaker questions for you, just rapid questions. Please don't think too hard about them. I wonder what, what is it? <sighs> I want you to just go with it and then um, have fun with it. I've got three. So okay. before, before we dig into the meat, okay. All righty. All right. So here's the first one. What is the best thing that's happened to you this year? The best thing that has happened to me this year was stretching my capabilities. I would say seeing how far I can stretch myself in terms of growth. Yeah, I think that's the best thing that has happened this far. Love it. Okay, that's the most adventurous thing you have done. Adventurous thing? <laughs> <laughs> I think currently it's Mrs. South Africa. Wow, okay, I knew you'd say that. <laughs> Look, okay. I never thought in my life that I would go into a pageant and let alone expose myself to this extent. So mm -hmm. I sit down, I'm like, girl, hey, yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. you, you're doing really yeah, crazy things lately. <laughs> and I love crazy. it for you. Good crazy. Yes. Good crazy. Yeah. Love it for you. Okay, last one. What's the song that's on repeat? What that's been on repeat this week? In your playlist that you play, going to the gym. You've just been playing it over and over. There is a light. It's actually Zoe's favorite song, but there is a light. And I forgot the group, but I'll remember the group. Yeah, there is a light in all of us. Okay, okay. Yeah. Love it. Love it. Great stuff. Okay. So, friend, tell us a little bit, just for everyone perhaps to get a deeper insight into who you are. Who are you? Where did you grow up? And what do you do currently that keeps you busy and motivated? Okay, so I am Tembi Mukonto. <laughs> I grew up in Pretoria, got married to Sotani Magwaza. And then I moved to Durban, right? So that was 17 years ago. I got married then, and I have a 13 year old daughter, Uyegelo. And I currently live in Umtlanga. And I've been a stay home mom by choice. I studied, I qualified. <laughs> and then my husband and I decided, Hore, look, for the for our family, this is the model that we're gonna go with. And it meant me being more hands-on at home and he would worry about other stuff. And I've been grateful for that, very much blessed for that. And I am I currently came to a point where I was like, you know what, I think I've done my share. I would want to explore more on who Tembi is, what does Tembi, what is the seed basically that got planted inside of me? I am surely more than a mom, more than a wife. Mm -hmm. And I found myself in this journey of Mrs. South Africa 
um, trying to live my life in purpose, in full purpose, making an impact out there, and truly living fully. That's who, that's my summary, actually. Love it, friend. So when this pageant came along, were you already in the process of trying to figure out what's next for Tembi? Like, were you already trying to think, okay, what am I here for? And then what was that process like? Did you, did you, did you have like moments where you're like, okay, God, I don't hear you um, leading me a certain way. Cause I know you've done quite a few things in this journey and we'll unpack it later. Some of the things that have stretched you community outreach work that you've done, but before you actually decided, what was that process like when you were still trying to figure out and you're still trying to listen out to God's leading as to what's next? Sure. It is very rough, I would say, to the soul, right? When you start asking yourselves those questions, and I also believe that it comes with age, as soon as I got older, like after 35, right, you ask yourself, why do you exist? And it is such a fight within your soul. It's unsettling that there's, it's almost like it steals your peace, your inner peace, right? Because there's this yearning of just wanting to do more, of when a seed is planted and then it's trying to come out. Mm. It's never an easy process. So the conversations that I had with God were those conversations. And I remember at that time, I had also been, I wouldn't say diagnosed, but I was like, I discovered that I have a back issue, right? So I stopped working out. So I really had a moment of sitting at home for six months and really like meditating, reading, soaking myself in the word. And like I was within myself, within myself, right? So there were no distractions, I would say, because sometimes our everyday, what's this, what's the word? Like our, our busyness, the schedule. Yeah, our busyness our can, mm. yeah, I can steal it those does. moments of being with yourself. Oh. I went through that and I think that's where the clarity of things started to appear slowly. Pictures, small pictures, puzzles there and there. And then the picture was like getting together. But yeah, it's been a very, I would say, fulfilling Mm. experience fulfilling journey yeah yeah i like that friend and I, I like that you paint the real uh, uh picture behind it because it like you say the analogy you used about the seed coming out of the ground it can be quite a process and sometimes we shy away from that i guess the pain that comes with that growth and that that stretching ne? yeah um yeah. So you you had this moment of reflection and I think one thing led to another and the 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 applications for the pageant were were advertised and I remember us chatting a bit about it. You had them for a while. You were still thinking, should I enter, should I not? So I actually want to touch on self-doubt because I don't think there's a bigger platform. It's one of the the, the many platforms that put one out there. And I guess self-doubt could have played a role in, in, in the beginning part while you were still ideating around, should I apply, should I not? What advice would you give someone who wants to pursue their passion? Because now in hindsight, you actually ended up applying, entering and coming this far. But what advice would you give to someone who is in a value of self-doubt about anything that they are trying to venture into? Look, for me, surrounding yourself with authentic people. Uh, when they say it takes a, a village to mm. to grow up um, a child, right? To groom mm. a child. Authentic people, mm. your tribe. People that you will gladly share that seed with. And they will help you to fertilize the seed, reassure you, put energy into it. Mm. You, you definitely need your sisters, your, your support structure. So for me, 
it was very important that I remember when the idea came to mind, I didn't firstly share it with everybody. There were certain people that I shared it with and I was intentional in doing that because you don't now want to share it and then because already you you have doubts mm, you, know? mm, yeah. you have doubts so you you don't need more people feeding onto those doubts mm. you need people who will um see you and see the light see what you are seeing mm. and able to say you know what girl go for it, you've got nothing to lose. I would say it's very important to surround yourself with authentic people, honest people, supportive people who wish you well, people who want to see you succeed. I remember when you told me that you want to enter, was it a shopping mall? I was pushing my cart and chatting to you at the same time. <laughs> and the excitement, it was as if it's a journey I'm about to embark on. And I think for me, it is because I knew your intentions about a platform such as this, because we we know each other quite well. And I knew that this is a platform that you would use and figure out somehow to bring the glory back to God. And, and I think now I want to just touch on the fact that you've been through the journey and a pageant is known for certain things, right? So yeah. Behind the glitz and the glam, the pretty dresses that you guys wear um, on stage, what role has has sisterhood, family, what role have those elements in your life played as you navigated through some of the challenges in, in a pageant like this? Sure. Look, family, sisterhood, journeys like this, unfortunately, you can't walk them alone. In as much as they are your journey, it's your journey, but you need to move with people. The support that you need in this journey is just enormous. So T, you've mentioned the importance of being selective when you, in, in terms of who you expose your dream to. You, you've mentioned the importance of making sure that you tell the people that you know will feed back the energy that you need while you're still thinking about an idea. In this journey, you've had a lot of tasks that you had to do that yeah. some of them are things that you've never done before. Talk to me about one of the most challenging tasks that you, you guys were given in, and what you learned about yourself from completing it. Okay. So basically... The whole journey is about challenging tasks, right? <laughs> <laughs> you can't say there was one. Yeah. You know? Okay. So what comes to mind was the journey requires you to go out there and basically be a spokesperson for yourself, right? People must buy into your journey because you are required to have sponsors, right? And for me, that was like, phew really something out of my comfort zone now you find yourself having to to do public speaking to do proposals because you are now a brand that must sell itself sure. and also you i think the last task that i did now was to put together an event sure i've never done that in my life so now here's an event to it from like start to finish. And then it was for a good cause though, you raising funds for a charity or organization. In my mm -hmm. case, it was for cancer. And you have to raise an amount of more than 10,000 rands. And so I must say that at the end of the day, I'm very proud of myself that I was able to accomplish those tasks. Mm -hmm. and. Coming back to what have I learned about myself is that, look, if you put your mind to it, if you focus, if you are dedicated, mm. it is in us. Everything it is, it, it's in us. You are the powerhouse that determines how, how far you, you can be stretched. Yeah, yeah. How far are you going to yeah. stretch yourself? Yeah. So I think that you put your mind to, you can attain that. Mm. 
How was that feeling after after having completed that that event? When you looked back and reflected at the end of the day to everything that happened, girl, I was like, yo, I'm so proud of you, girl. Yeah. <laughs> Because, you know, as we want to say that when we've attained big things, sure. right? Mm. But, but for me, it was like I gave myself a goal that, look, I would like to have 30 ladies at sure. least to come and attend my event. And guess what? I had more than that. Yeah. Wow. So I was really proud of myself. And I was like, wow, girl. I'm so proud of you. You've done well. <laughs> Everything turned out like how I had planned it. Sure. Uh, so, yeah, it was a very fulfilling, humbling, and exciting at the same time. Yeah. 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 Oh, man. And I, I'm proud of you. I think you are Thank raising you. a good girl child. I know she's young now, but the go get I can do it attitude nuggets or lessons that she's learning from you now are things that nobody will ever take away from her she probably even sees the things we don't see that you go through and you might think she's a child but I guess what I'm saying is even in the pageant here's a teachable moment for your own daughter to witness her mom tackle these challenging things and just push herself to the limit so so kudos that's to very you true. For that. yeah, yeah that's very true Tato because when I started, when the thought came, right, for me to do this, and I shared with the ex Celine that were high, right? Mm -hmm. And then uh, Yagel was like, oh my gosh, please don't use your last name. The kids at my school, <laughs> like the kids at my school, they can't know that my mom entered Mrs. South Africa. Please okay. don't. But with time, I've seen how she has warmed up. And I think me, wanting to live my life fully and intentionally so i've mm -hmm. seen how she has come out of her shell as well mugela is busy she's i just want to fill my life that time Love i'm it. like hold on please don't yeah. add on because yeah. i'm also hectic yeah <laughs> everything is just bad shame i've seen how confident she has also come in her mm. journey yeah but so yeah. it's very true that Look, the energy that we put out there, our kids also absorb. Yeah. yeah they absorb. Yeah. 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 So I'm, I'm very grateful for that. And yeah, yeah. I'm yeah. enjoying that, seeing that side of her. <laughs> yes, I'm sure you are. Friends, tell me about your foundation. I think it, this is, this pageant has made it easy for you to use it as a vehicle to push that work firstly when did you start it why did you start it and what are some of the things that you've been up to with the foundation firstly i've always been drawn to charity work right whether it was a church there was a project i would find myself in the lead whether a group of ladies that i belong to uh, but stock fell or just friends who are like, hey, mm -hmm. let's do this. I'll always be like, raise up my hand to be that girl who's like in it. And funny enough, one of my gym mates, I think it was like probably seven years ago or something. Because I was always coming to them. I'm like, guys, eh, we're going to this home. Can you guys donate this and this? And then one of the ladies was like, can't matter why when unga fully foundation, you know. Wow. At that time, I was like, hi, Cindy. And then, and then finally, after a couple of years, I decided to to open it and to do it formally. So when Mrs. Mm. South Africa came, they find me doing this. To my advantage, I would say it's it's also one of it, it aligns with their brand, yeah, bo. But the difficult part for me is that now I must show what I'm doing. Yeah, Bo? Ooh, and I it's see. so yeah, it's so tricky with charity because it can be read wrong. It's like mm. you want people to applaud you now for doing yeah. the good work. Yeah, Bo? And yet mm -hmm. I was doing it at on my side there quietly and I was comfortable okay. with that. So in as much as 
it has been a beautiful vehicle for me to showcase uh, my foundation in the journey, but it has also been a challenge for me. I've yeah. got so much of content, I would say, mm -hmm. that I've done with mm -hmm. my projects found the Ole K Foundation. And it's just hard. Every time you want to post something, there's mm -hmm. that little thing. You know, the Bible talks of what you do on your right. Yeah, mustn't, the left hand mustn't know. It's also not a bad thing to, to put it out there because that's how you get sponsors. That's how people know. And yeah. people actually lend a helping hand to say, mm. hey, we saw you doing this. Can we help with this? So it's mm. a very tricky one that I'm still learning there yeah. on how to manage it and yeah. manage yourself. Yeah. yeah. Sure. That is actually quite interesting to learn that the, you had apprehensions about navigating that fine line. And I'm, I hope you find a way because you write it, you have to bring awareness, but at the same time, not dehumanize the people that you're helping. Yeah. You know, I totally get it. I totally get it. Friend, tell, take me back to the, the announcement of the, the top 30. And I'll tell you why I want us to go back there because I was actually privileged enough to to witness you being called um, to form part of the <laughs> the top thirty finalists, and there, there's so many lessons that I learned from your character back then um, that I thought we could highlight. So you were called number last. <laughs> hey, girl. Yeah. <Gail. laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm and and I think, we're praying there. Eh? Yeah, I think just to give everyone uh, uh, um, some context, there was this beautiful program in the beginning where you guys were in your dresses and you sang for us and danced for us. But now we hadn't gotten to the reason for us being there. So we were all ecstatic and happy until the time where the choosing had to be done so what i saw in that moment was just like as your supporter the anxiety that was building up inside of me to say lord look we've prayed that uti can go as far as she can in the journey but at the end of the day this is a competition and you always want your person to make it far so we all sat in yes. one room your friends uh, your husband your your daughter and your parents and we saw this thing um, unfold. So they called everyone from yeah. the first name. We, yeah. we were still hopeful and they were calling names to and you guys were backstage. But for us in the seats, I think by name number 15, okay, yeah. that, that's when we were shifting in our seats and yeah. we were like, okay, okay, I'm sure her name is going to come up. <laughs> <laughs> so you can imagine by 20, 25, yeah. 27, you know, 28, 29, I think at 29, that's where I started thinking about things I'm going to say to you afterwards. <laughs> I was like, okay, so when I see her, this is <laughs> and friend, we, we had just resolved that it is what it is. And it I is looked well with her soul. <laughs> <laughs> I looked to the right. I, I sat next to your daughter and she was so quiet. And on my left was one of our dearest friends, Mom Kuku who was also just like in her feelings and my heart was here. So I'm wondering if I felt that way, what was going on with you backstage as you were just listening out and as you were waiting through all of this? Yeah. So I've always been told that I am normally so calm in a very <laughs> stressful situation. Right. And I think, mm. I was myself being calm, knowing that I've given it my all. And Tato, to be honest, I was so much at peace. Mm. Mm. I was so much at peace within me, but the feelings backstage, the emotions backstage were so loud. Mm. And when mm. I, it was tense. It was yeah. ladies were looking down. And I remember I kept on in my head, I kept on repeating 
your will be done, your will be done. And I think I was sitting on a table ne? and I was going mm-hmm. like this, I was going like this. But if you had seen my face, you would have probably seen like a relaxed face. <laughs> yeah, but, and then I was called and then I was like, oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> Oh yeah, <laughs> I was like, oh my gosh. Yeah. Know? Yeah. But I've always believed in you know that scripture that says all things work together for good. Yes. yes. I've always believed in that, the good and the bad, right? Oh. So there was so much of peace in me that if my journey with Miss South Africa had to end then, sure. then it was also aligned with my yeah. purpose. Yes. Yeah, my purpose journey and for me to make it to the top 30 it was yes a cherry on top but it was mm. also a confirmation from god that look the journey continues yeah the the purpose journey continues so i'm sorry that you guys had to <laughs> <laughs> has to go through no. that and, and it is so like you to start prepping um, yes what are you gonna say to me and and, yeah. and, and we actually had a workshop uh, this past weekend yeah? and they were saying that look we need to start preparing our friends and family right mm. for the finals yeah bo? Mm. to manage yes. expectations because yeah. now can you imagine Runa, we are, you're okay. Because mm. at this point in my journey, I've already won. Mm. I've already won. But obviously, my family, my friends, maybe winning to them is the crown. Mina, there are things that I wanted to acquire in the journey, and mm. those things are happening. Just being courageous to actually do the journey itself, that's a win on its own let alone making it to the finals so Mm. that's a win on its own yeah it was a very it was a very humbling experience and Mm. also very grateful moment that Mm. uh, oh my hard work has been noticed and clearly there is something that they saw in me yeah it was really a a big night (laughs) <laughs> no, no. I, yeah. I'll, I one I'll never forget for sure. I love that text that you referred to because indeed all things do work together. You've been stretched, you've been equipped, you've been elevated, you've grown, you've won. Yeah. I think that's the key thing that I take away from the experience and what you've shared. I think I was I'm tempted to actually mention something that you experienced during the pageant itself only because I realized that we agree to do what we are called to do, what the the spirit tells us to do, right? And then while we are in that journey, things come along the way to distract us. Think back to that evening. I want you to take me back to how you felt physically, especially in relation to your back, because I see a really good illustration of how at times when you're trying to pursue your dream, trying to pursue your purpose, the devil can throw curveballs, yeah. things that can attempt to destabilize you. So take me back to physically how you were, especially given the fact that you guys had to walk up and down stairs, dance and sing in the longest heels and in the longest dresses. That experience for you with your back that night. Yeah. So that day, during the day, we had to do rehearsals and when you do rehearsals obviously you do them in your heels that you're going to be wearing on the night and with my back issue my back took strain by the time it was short time Mm -hmm. my back was like fire Mm -hmm. and i remember backstage and i'm like oh my god i took my painkillers i think i took twice Mm ne and I then texted you guys. I was like, yo, my back is in flames. Can mm. we? Can you just pray for me? <laughs> and this is where your tribe comes in. What we spoke about earlier that, look, mm. it's not a journey that you can walk alone. I guess life in J. Mm. Mm. You can't do life alone. Mm. We are all puzzles. 
of this picture. And there was also a lady backstage who is a pastor and I was sitting there on the table and I was rubbing my back and she was like, what's wrong? I'm like, my back is aching. Yeah, bo, my back is aching. And she just grabbed me and she prayed for me backstage. Wow. Before, before we went in, right? She just grabbed me and put her hand on my back and she just prayed for me. And that for me was such a beautiful moment. Also a confirmation of being at the right place, mm -hmm. at the right platform, because mm -hmm. also what Mrs. South Africa promotes is sisterhood. And that mm. is something that is very dear to my heart. Yeah, but I would say as women, we can all be in one room and shine different lights. Mm. Mm. And having that backstage, also having the support of those who came, who are also mm. aware of my situation at that time and who are also praying for me. That for me was like, you know what, ammunition mm. for me for the night. Sure. Yeah, but so it's, it was very special for me what mm. happened at that yeah. time. Yeah. yeah. An experience I'm sure you'll never forget. Yeah. And I'm seeing that with age as well. Maybe at that time when you are going through the most, you think it's the end of it. But God gives us strength to push, mm -hmm. to push forward. And yeah. when you look back, you're like, oh, okay, I had to go through that for this. Trust the process. Yeah. You know? yeah. Life is bigger than us. There's no mm -hmm. manual to life. We just have to believe in God that, look, he knows, he sees. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and with him on our side, yeah. we, we can overcome all these obstacles that we meet mm -hmm. along the way. What would you say to someone who's thinking about joining a pageant like this? And what would you say is like the key tip of not losing yourself and realizing that it, it's a powerful tool to be used for good. So when you start the journey, it's highlighted so many times that your why is like your fuel, right? Because in as much as there's 100 ladies there, everyone has their why. And defining your why clearly will help you to run your race in your lane. Mm. Right, because there are ladies who are there. Yes, there are those who are there to get the crown. One, mm -hmm. there are those who are there to push their them as a brand. Right, sure. there are sure. ladies who are there to find themselves because being a mother, being a wife, we easily lose ourselves. There are those who are running businesses and they are there to push their business. Mm. Yeah, but. I would say it's a beautiful platform for you to pursue mm. uh, if you're interested, but your why must be clear. So for me, I think your why is very important. And I would definitely say, go for it, girl. If there's mm. so much, it's actually more than a pageant. It's really like a self empowering uh, platform for married women from I think from the age of 20 something to 55, if I'm not mistaken, no height restrictions, no modeling history. So it's really a good vehicle for those who are clear on what is it that they want. Can you tell me what has been your go-to scripture that you've just leaned on in the season? So my favorite verse is Proverbs 3, verses 5 and 6. I think 5, 6, 7, right? That one that says, trust in the Lord with all your heart and mm -hmm. lean not on your own understanding. Mm -hmm. That has been my verse, you know, when things are I'm like, mm-mm, girl. <laughs> go, to, yeah. go to your verse, yeah. you know. But also, there's also like a cousin to that verse now, right? That 
Okay. Yeah, we, we're building a family here. Yeah. So there's a, there's a cousin to yeah. invest now, uh, which sure. is Ephesians um, 3.20. Um, sure. That's, uh, I think it says, now unto, now unto him uh, who mm. is able to do exceedingly abundantly more than we can imagine. You know, mm. so those mm. are the scriptures that I find that when I need some censoring, I, I go sure. to them and they really, really um, boost me up and, and reaffirm yeah. me in who I am. Yes. Yeah. And yeah. who God is in my life. Yeah. Sure. That's powerful. I actually have one, one more question for you pertaining to the role your support system has had to play, in particular your husband. When you decided to, to enter this pageant, what was his response and what would you say has been the thing that's surprised you the most about his experience because I can imagine that this is not just Tembi's uh, journey yeah. you know and we cannot take away from the fact that you've had a teammate who's been rooting for you all the way what are the things that you've you've learned or enjoyed seeing um, in him in in this journey he's been so supportive man. and I think what I noticed was that he he's not a guy who will like show excitement or like emotions like easily, you know, but he'll give you his word and then his actions will follow. Yeah, mm -hmm. Bo. So mm -hmm. for me, when I got selected to be in the finals, I think for him, that was like, oh, Konala, yeah, Konala, you know? <laughs> Yeah, you know, yeah. It, it was almost mm -hmm. like my semi-finalist journey was um, to prove myself. Mm -hmm. he, where am I going with this? He was supportive, mm -hmm. but like yeah. you know, when someone will be watching you and being supportive, but like okay, probably at the back of his mind, um, I want to see where this is going. Sure, <laughs> I want to see sure. where this is going. Yeah. So, so when when I got selected to be a finalist, I think for him it was a defining moment. It was oh okay, um, mm. so Iko and this is it's about A, B, C, and you know these are the pillars. Yeah. You know yeah. um, because he could also see the growth in me and trying mm. to put effort. And he's yeah. the one who actually motivated me to to have like a proper team, you know, like, mm. no, if you're going to do this, you must yeah. do it correctly, you know? Um, yeah. I know someone who does this, you mm. know, who can help you with your interview preps. I know mm. um, someone who can help you with walking the ramp, you know? Wow. Um, mm. So he's he's been, shame, very supportive um, yeah, in his yeah. way. At Emperor's Palace, he was sitting there calmly. I love how he is what you need for yeah. this moment, you know, and that you were fortunate enough to be able to lean on him and that he was there, you know, to support you. We don't take it for granted that anything that you want to grow is going to need your, your purpose partner yeah. to be fully on board, you know, because yeah. I'm sure it could have been 10 times more difficult had that alignment not been there. So I'm happy for you for that. No, very true, friend, because you can imagine, we see anything that you embark on, it disrupts your, your everyday schedule. You know what mm. I mean? So, so you, you definitely need a partner who will be understanding and have grace. Mm, yeah, well, mm, that, mm, okay, mm. you are at that um, time in your life where you want to explore more on mm. your purpose. And mm. they are there to support you and, mm. and just be a team player, you know, yeah. Yeah. In, in, in you trying to discover the seed that God has planted in you. Mm. Because mm. at the end of the day, I think we're all praying for that. We'll see. 
a life partner should be someone who adds on to your purpose. Mm. Like who's, who's gonna walk the purpose with sure. you, you mm. know, not take away the purpose for you. Mm. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I'm I'm very grateful and I'm very blessed, I must say. I love it for the both of you. I love it for the experiences as well that yeah. You you'll sit back and look at it this and say, sure, man, yeah. we, we 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 had a time. We had quite yeah. a time. We're having fun. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. T, yeah. thank you. Thank you thank from the bottom you. of my heart. <laughs> thank you. It was I, so much fun. It was. And I think my parting shot to you is thank you for um being a light. And I wish you all the best of Thank the future you. and the journey you've got this girl and we are 100 percent behind you all the best even with your foundation and the work that you're doing and you're still going to be doing through the exposure that you've received in this pageant so kudos to you love you lots and you. take care thank you bye Thank you.